What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create some debris fields for your explosions utilizing the Chaos add-on inside of Blender. This will be somewhat of a continuation of our last tutorial on showing you how you can create a dirt explosion inside of Blender utilizing Chaos as well. However, you don't have to watch that video first to get the benefits from this tutorial. This tutorial should be useful for any explosion you are creating utilizing the Chaos add-on. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender and this was our dirt explosion that we created in our last video what we're going to do in this tutorial is just create some rock debris blasting outward so let's go ahead and get started when I first start adding my debris fields to my explosion I usually just disable my smoke domain just so we can work a little bit faster and our smoke cache doesn't slow down our computer so we'll go ahead and select the smoke domain here and we'll go ahead and go to the physics tab and just disable it really quickly alright so now we can scroll around our scene much better without any lagging all right, so now we'll go ahead and we'll go to frame 20 where our explosion starts and we'll open up the chaos tab here and we'll go ahead and deselect the dynamic dirt checkbox and instead we'll choose the rocks debris but you can use any debris you would like it's the same essential process so we'll go ahead and select the rocks debris here then we'll go down to our particle parameters and we'll adjust a few of these here we'll go ahead and leave all of these the same except for the particle amount we'll increase this to maybe six and then now we'll go ahead and make sure our 3D cursor is near the center of our explosion where we want the particles to blast out from and we'll go ahead and press the 360 ground burst operator. And now as you can see our rock particle emitter has been added to our scene here. We'll go ahead and bring it up above our plane here. And now let's go ahead and scroll through our timeline to see what we're getting so far. All right, so as you can see, we already have somewhat of a debris field here, but let's go ahead and adjust a few of the particle parameters to get a little bit more of a unique result. So first, I'm going to go ahead and scale our particle emitter up on the Z axis a little bit to make these particles blast more upwards into our scene here instead of outwards. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, if we scroll through, you can see the particles blast more upwards a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and while our debris field is selected, we'll go to the particle tab here. And this is where we can change how our particles interact with everything. So we'll go ahead and leave the number of particles at around 1200, but we will decrease the end frame to something like 24. We'll also go ahead and go to the velocity here. We want to add a little bit more energy to our particles. So we'll go ahead and increase the normal velocity, which is essentially how fast the particles are initially being blasted out. Um, we'll go ahead and increase this to something like 16. And we'll go ahead and play it back here to see what we're getting so far. And that's looking a little bit better. We could increase this a little bit more. It's totally up to you on what the result you're going for is. To increase the randomness of some of these particles, I like to use the randomize feature right here. For the default particle parameters with chaos, it's at 6, but we might increase this to something like 10 just for a little bit different result. Maybe we might increase it to even 20 and see what that does for us. That's giving us a much more random result, which I think will suit this explosion very well. The less this number is, the more you can control where the particles are being blasted out from. But since we want a very random result, it's nice to just increase this and then the particles just start going all over the place in a little bit more natural way so you don't have to build it quite as much. So this is looking pretty cool. One thing we might change is the rotation of the particles. If you look really closely, sometimes when the rock debris hits the ground, they start kind of rotating in, in a little bit of a weird way. And uh, to get around this, you might just select the particle system and under the rotation tab here, you'll just go under angular velocity and we'll just decrease the amount of angular velocity at default, maybe to something like two and try this out again here. And now as you can see, it's just very slow rotation. That's a little bit more natural. And uh, this is looking pretty good. You can also go to the render tab here under the particle settings and change the scale or the scale randomness a little bit. Um, but I think this is gonna look pretty good with our dirt blast. So let's go ahead and reselect our smoke domain here. And we will go back to the physics tab and view our smoke again by reselecting these here. And now as you can see here, if we scroll through our timeline here, you can get the idea on what our rock debris is actually doing. And this is looking pretty good. I would say there are a few more settings that I will show you how to play around with, but I think this could be an acceptable result if we got a render. But let me show you a few more tricks just so you have them up your sleeve. We'll go ahead and deselect our uh, view domain here once again, and we'll play around with our particle settings a little more. 
so we'll go ahead and select the rock debris let's go ahead and bring it down again and uh, one thing that is fun to play around with as well under the particle tab here is under the physics tab we can play around with the forces here if necessary sometimes I play around with both the drag and the damp setting when you increase either of these essentially what it does is it slows down the particle over time in different types of ways so I might just decrease the dampening here a bit to something like 0.01 even and uh, now if we play through it here as you can see it blasts out a little bit more randomly and uh, if we decrease the drag all the way you can see that it really blast way upward so you don't want to do that entirely it's pretty realistic but it's not quite as controlled so I might just keep our drag at something like 0.7 and see what that gets us and again you can play around with these depending on what your explosion looks like and I might actually also increase the amount of particles in our scene here we'll go ahead and increase this number to 2000 and now that's looking pretty cool as well We'll go ahead and view through our camera here and it totally again it totally depends on what you're going for in your scene here we could uh, maybe decrease our velocity a little bit that's a pretty cool looking result one other thing I want to show you guys before we finish this quick video is how you can adjust your collision plane here at the bottom here in the previous video we added this to our scene it's simply just under the chaos tab here one of the collision objects here and uh, all it is essentially is a cube here that we've scaled down on the z-axis to look like a plane but then we've activated the collision properties for both the particle settings and the fluid dynamic settings so it's going to interact with both particles and fluids so something we can play around with with these uh, collision objects are the collision particle settings here and depending on the surface that our explosion is on we may want to increase or decrease some of these settings in order to get the particles to interact with it in a more realistic way for example if we decrease the stickiness of this specific collision plane here below our explosion to something like zero we can see here if when we play through it that our rocks are bouncing around a little bit more on top of the explosion once they're output from the particle system it gets a little bit more of a realistic result so depending on the material that your explosion is supposed to be on top of you may want to change a few of these collision properties but I'm just going to leave it as it is for now just for the sake of this tutorial all right, so to finish off this video, I'm going to just go through my basic render settings that you've seen me go through before and just show you how to output the debris field so that you can composite it with a visual effects compositor of your choice. I'll just go back to my camera view here. I will usually export my debris field separately from my smoke or dirt explosion. So to do this, I would just simply go to the dirt domain and then under the camera setting, I would just deselect it so that it is not rendered in our scene anymore and we're just going to output our debris field by itself with the camera in our scene of course I will choose the angle I want to render out the debris field from keeping in mind how I want to composite all the elements together I also have the collision ground plane here at the bottom here under the object properties tab I'm using it as a shadow catcher plane essentially by selecting this shadow catcher option here we can render out the shadows that the rocks create when they're blasting up into the environment but we're not rendering out the actual material or the ground itself it's just the shadows from the rocks so you can composite it onto live action footage much better also in our scene here we have two area lights that are essentially just lighting up the rock and debris fields here and under the world tab here i have just added a basic sky texture for some ambient lighting as well under the camera tab here I'm rendering it at 35 samples you can definitely go less but I usually keep it around 20 to 40 depending on how realistic I want it I also make sure under the film tab here that my transparent checkbox is selected so that we can render out these particles with an alpha channel for compositing on top of a live action footage or background if you would like you can also check the motion blur and play around with the shutter angle but I usually add motion blur in a compositor of my choice afterwards Finally, under the output tab here, I will typically render out everything at 1920 by 1080p resolution at 100%. And then, of course, you will choose your frames of your animation and then choose your output folder here that you would like to export your animation to. As usual, I'm using the OpenEXR file format with an alpha channel again to composite on top of a background of my choice.
And I almost forgot one thing you do need to do to your debris field is make sure that you bake the particle collision cache. So to do that, you would just select your debris field and then go to the particle properties tab here. Then under the cache option here, once you have saved your project, you would just go ahead and bake your collision dynamics for your particle system. And now your debris field is baked into your scene and Blender doesn't have to calculate the physics every time. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Once you have something that you like, go ahead and uh, bake your particle cache here and uh, yeah you can just go ahead and render out your animation or image right here and you should have a pretty nice debris field that you can composite with your explosion anyways guys that's it for this video i hope it was helpful as always feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below we'd love to hear what you'd like to see next i'll see you guys next time